Uh, we're gonna start shooting the second, the third one now. <laughs> I said stealing while stealing your mooch glass. That's my mooch glass. That's science. No, I mean I stole their '86 version of your whiskey. Hey, hey! Cut that shit out! <sighs> Damn it! You know I backwashed that. All right, so we're drinking. Uh, this was a gift actually from the brand. They okay. sent this to us. Oh, all right. Right? So. Brown Foreman crew. That, I'm not obligated to say nice things. No, no, definitely Thank you for not. sending stuff. I hope I like it. If I don't, you're out of luck. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the Old Forester birthday edition from 2016, not 2017, 12 year old bourbon. This is probably one of the sweeter bourbons I've smelled. So this is a, a selection of 93 barrels, resulting in a total of around 14,400 bottles. And uh, it's the largest release they did up to that point. All right, how does that help me? Fifth floor of Warehouse K, aged for 12 Oh, well, sh fifth floor. Yeah. You got me, man. Located near a window facing west. Nope, done. Which let them Kiss the sun. Garbage whiskey. <laughs> east. East side. Send it back. Everybody knows east side's the best side. <laughs> Don't do this. You know what this is. <laughs> Why would you start us down this path? Dude. <laughs> oh. Uh, people blame me for uh, having locker room humor. You have no idea what he just <laughs> did. That's true. No idea. Okay, so for me, I'm getting so much intense caramel and, and cherry and sweetness on the nose. Yeah. I, I fully expect this to be a really strong, vib what's weird vibrant bourbon. You know uh, the cheap cinnamon rolls that aren't cinnamon? They were the orange topping cinnamon rolls you could get out of a can when you were a kid. You get them in a can, put them in the oven, and you put the orange top drizzle. It's like an orange Danish cinnamon roll kind of vibe. No. That's what I'm getting. I do not know what this is. Well, you could simplify and just say cinnamon roll. Bread. Brown sugar, cinnamon. All right. A little frosting. Maybe. But I get the citrus notes too, which makes me think of the- Oh wait, hold citrus. Orange, Danish kind of thing. Oh, I think there may be some orange in there, yeah. See, right about all things, as usual. You notice how I didn't argue with you? Mm-hmm. Even though everybody, everybody- Ooh, that's smooth. Knows you're wrong. That's a high rye though. It's spicy. It is spicy. And you say smooth? Smooth is the aftertaste the word. is lingering. This was bitey for me. Yeah, the, it's the aftertaste that won't go away for me on this one. Mm. It's just kind of. It's, it's still lingering. This is. Still lingering. <laughs> so, this is not an entry level bourbon. These flavors are so rich and vibrant that for people that are into bourbon and they want to take it up a notch, they want that concentration of flavor. This is right in their wheelhouse. Everything's amped up. This is an amped up bourbon. You know what's cool? One cool fact, right. random fact about brown form bourbon. You said cool. Be careful with how you qualify. Uh, they were the first. Guy, he was the first guy to bottle bourbon. Okay. What did they do before that? Barrels. You're just serving it out of barrels. Just it was ladle it out. Yeah. Well, you know, like go to the bar and ask for a whiskey. They'll there's your whiskey. Okay. Or you know, bring your own container. But he was the first one. He was the first person to do commercial bottling. Benjamin Haslow, new to the channel. You guys are yes, great. Welcome. I haven't had a chance to go back through all of the old videos yet. What is your feeling on Canadian whiskey, mm. and what makes it different from the rest? Okay, so Rex answered this in the comments, and it was actually basically what I would say. Um, and so what I would say is level four sommelier. <laughs> right level up, bidding. <laughs> uh, what I would say is. Canada has some truly unique distillation processes. Um, they require anything called whiskey to be three years. That's cool. That's not totally unique, but they do the distillation style where they'll do different runs of things and then blend them together afterwards. They'll even age them separately and blend them together under one run. They'll do a distillation run, water it back down, and then distill it again. They do a bunch of fascinating things. However, most of the time, it results in the most boring whiskey I've ever tasted, which is depressing because they're capable of amazing crap. Now, <laughs> simultaneously, what we've recently discovered on this channel yeah. is that the Americans don't get the good Canadian whiskey. Yes, that's that, and 
you the qualifier you used was very important. You said mm -hmm. most of the time. Most of the time. We did uh, come across. We've found some, Was it Glen Scotia? Well, yeah, but that's a. They are not doing. They're doing it more traditional. But are they still. from Canada? Yes. Good enough. Yeah. No, we've stumbled on this in Canadian whiskeys. We can get behind. Forty Creek is, was decent. Uh, a bunch of different ones, but let me, let me just say, it is true. Americans are not getting the benefit of what Canadians have to offer. You know, the Canadians keep it for themselves while simultaneously pretending to be kind and generous. Yes, we've established this. Bastards. They have the reputation for being lovely people. All lies. Just, All the lies. The whole country. Disgusting. Whole country. <laughs> Even the Inuits. I imagine a nation full of Canadians saying sorry. sorry. What I really wanted to see right now, here's what I'm picturing in my head. The moment I said Inuit, I just picture somewhere in the vast reaches of the north, right. there's one dude sitting in the igloo. They somehow got a, a wife with a TV. <laughs> he's sitting there, and I say, Wait a minute. And the Inuits are ass. And he goes, Ha! Ah! He stands up outraged, but there's no one for miles to hear him. I'm going to read a comment because this is almost <laughs> racist. That's what I'm picturing. This is almost racist. <laughs> Great Axe 3, hey guys, I have a little bit of an unorthodox, uh, unorthodox request. <laughs> words are hard. Yeah, <laughs> words are hard. Words are real hard. <laughs> Can you bring Chad in for a video and pour him whatever he wants? No. I love that Chad gets to edit this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're so cruel. Oh, in that case. He can sit off screen and judge you for how long our videos are. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he already does that. Yeah, he does. <laughs> uh, we'll have to do it. Sometime we'll drag Chad on camera. Fin Zix? Fin Zix. Fin Six. <laughs> you right over there? Right. In a single word, you've given me a stroke. <laughs> YouTube I, handles are the best. I think the genius of the Whiskey Vault is that you guys are channeling the Top Gear formula. Mm. Realizing that people aren't here for the quantitative reviews, but rather the experience. Daniel plays the role of May, delving into the background of distilleries and boring people to death with his I've never stupid, seen Top Gear. stupid, stupid, a lot of copying. He did not say, he did not boring, say stupid. Boring, horrible, irrelevant <laughs> whiskey knowledge. You're, you're, you're fired from reading comments. <laughs> It's right here. Yeah. It's right here. More Pete! Et cetera, with a few Clark Clarksonian more Pete. Yes, Rex, he strikes me as someone who would whiten his teeth so he can be Hammond. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I've never actually seen Top Gear. I know. And I've never talked to you about this. I put that uh, on there because I knew Rex has seen Top Gear. Yes, I never talked to you about this. But the moment we actually tried to start growing the channel, mm -hmm. in my head, the, the Top Gear Whiskey Channels. Oh, okay. Exactly it. Wow, yeah. man. That is, that's insightful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nailed it. Well, oh, denied. I'm going to do a comparison before we call this quits. Fine. What I think, though, is what I said earlier. If you're really into bourbon and you want to take it up a notch with some um, stronger, more vibrant, vibrant, more loud and rich flavors, this is nice. Mm -hmm. If you're just now dabbling into bourbons, it's going to be a bit strong and a bit harsh. Not like um, Stag Jr., which only exists to rip your bean bag off. Yeah, that's But true. to, uh, yeah, maybe, I, I think this could be really interesting with ice to tone it down just a little bit. Okay, how about just a standard Old Forester 86 proof? Okay. Just like, hey, let's just go get an Old Forester. This is the standard. Sure. Someone on one of the comments said, I've never seen anyone have to get out a pocket knife to open the plastic cover on a bottle. That was a level two. Level, yeah. Level two training. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you look fancier. Everybody knows Just that. hacking at a bottle. Just hacking at the plastic covering on a bottle. It really makes everybody at your event just relax whenever you're swinging a blade around. <laughs> like a, a bottle. Like a bourbon samurai. <laughs> <laughs> All right. There's the your holding history. Where's yours? Uh, you're holding, <laughs> you're holding mine, Rex. <laughs> uh, what's can, a, now? You can refer to me as Sweet Cheeks from now on. Fact, oh, I like this one better. Well, hold on. Smell on the smell. Alone. Yes, on the smell. On the taste, though, the regular one is it's so thin compared to this. I automatically I have more respect for this thing. It's, it's a little more hefty. It is hefty. What's the proof? A million damn things. Oh, it's almost 50. It's 48.5. I believe it. I, honestly, I would have said like 50, 51. But uh, it's just, it's it's not unbalanced, right? There's not anything that's Oh, I could see how these compare. Can you? Mm-hmm. 
this is obviously, this has got more richness mm -hmm. and uh, it's not harsher. This one's actually a little sharper, um, but there's less complexity, I think. But I actually enjoy this one. If I just wanted a bourbon, I would I would probably go for the 86. So this is the relaxing, sitting mm -hmm. around bourbon. This is the adventure bourbon. Yeah, the, and the flavor exploration. Good bourbon, sitting around, going on an adventure. Nice stuff. All right, here's the fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal a lover's heart. If you drink, may, may you, you drink, drink with us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.